Hello and welcome to DirectX 11 tutorial 34. In this tutorial we're just going to set up a simple uh, timer class so that we can get the time between each frame and pass in the change in time to when we are updating. So first let's go ahead and create a new header. We're just going to call this timer and I'm not going to get too into how this works. For the header file we are going to include chrono and we're going to have our constructor, our get milliseconds elapsed, restart, stop, and start the timer. And then we're just going to have a variable for if it's running. We're going to have a stop and a start uh, time point. And for Linux, it's uh, different. So that is why there is the if def here, in case you want to use this for some kind of Linux application. I know DirectX is Windows only, but I don't know. You might. You might develop something on Linux, who knows. So next let's create the CPP file. We're going to add a new item. We're going to call it timer.cpp. And for this, we're just going to have our constructor, which sets the start and stop to now. And I'm not really going to go into this. It's pretty self-explanatory. What it does is just a timer. So in our engine header, we are going to include our timer and we are going to put in our timer class. So when we initialize our engine, we are going to start our timer and then whenever we update, what we will do is we will calculate the uh, the change in time, the delta time. So we will do this by timer, get elapsed milliseconds, and then we will restart the timer. So when we restart the timer, we are just, you know, changing the now value for when it started. And when we stop the timer, which we're not doing, we are setting the stop value and getting it back. When we call it get elapsed milliseconds, if it's running, we are just calculating the elapsed milliseconds and returning it. And if it's not running, we're looking at the stop minus start. So back in our engine CPP, what we are going to do is we're going to take this delta time value and down here, not for our mouse, but for our uh, movement, we are going to multiply these by the delta time. In that way we should move at the same speed no matter what our frames per second is. Or about. It might not be exact, but it'll be close enough. So let's go to test this out. Alright, and uh, we're moving kind of fast, but what we can do is we can just modify the camera speed. Make that a little bit slower. Try this again. All right, well now we're moving way too slow. Okay, that's that's pretty reasonable speed. So we'll go ahead and do that. So currently we have VSync on again. So if I go back to my render frame, and if I can find it, there we go. So I'll turn VSync off by changing that one to a zero. And now you see, there we go we are getting the same speed as we had when VSync was on. And let's say that we wanted to uh, display what our FPS was. All right, our graphics will need access to the timer class. So we will go up a directory and include timer. And then in our private, we will add a timer called FPS timer. Now, when we initialize our graphics class, we will start the timer. What we will do is for each frame that we render, we will have a counter, initialize it to zero, and we will increment it by one. And I'm just making it static so that uh, we don't have to make another member in the class, just since this is probably not going to stay. And we're going to increment the FPS counter. And what we will do is we will say, if the uh, FPS timer, so if it has been one second, 
then what we will do is we will restart the FPS timer and we will have a string here to store our FPS string. We will default that to, to say FPS zero. And down here, instead of drawing hello world, we will uh, draw our FPS string. Oh, need to call C string on that. All right, and after we, right before rather, right before we uh, reset the FPS timer, we want to calculate our FPS. So the way that we do that is we will just look at what our FPS counter is. So we will set the FPS string equals FPS, and then we will call to string on our FPS counter. And then we will reset the FPS counter to zero. So if we test this out, we should now get an FPS counter at the top left. All right, and it updates uh, once a second and we're getting about uh, 4,500 FPS. All right, that's all that we are going to cover for this tutorial.